Hello and welcome to the episode 341 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, the Quarrymen have a better than usual gig. The Beatles appear twice on BBC in the same evening, and George Harrison records a misterioso album. On the 7th of December 1957, the Quarrymen performed at Whiston Hall in Liverpool for a second concert organized by a local promoter, Charlie McBain. It was a slightly better engagement than usual, being a Saturday night spot at a dance club. It might also be the first time George Harrison saw the band performing live, but as we saw in episode 37, this is just one version of that story. Anyhow, for the occasion, the Quarrymen featured Lang Gary on T-chest bass, Eric Griffiths on guitar, Colin Hanton on drums, John Lennon on guitar and voice, and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice. Five years later, in 1962, the Beatles had another two-hour lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, the 148. At night, they topped the bill of a seven-band concert at the Tower Barham in Wallasey. TV time in 1963. The Beatles started their working day with their first engagement in Liverpool in four months, convening at the Empire Theatre in the afternoon, where BBC filmed the special show of the Jukebox Jury programme, featuring an old Beatle jury panel. As you might recall from previous episodes of What a Fab Day, the program asked the jury to decide whether or not the 13 singles chosen for the show were hits or misses. The show was filmed between 2.30 and 3.15 pm, and broadcast between 6.05 and 6.35 pm. More interestingly, from 3.45 to 4.30 pm, the lads performed an afternoon gig for the audience in the studio, playing a shortened version of From Me To You, and then I saw her standing there, all my loving, roll over Beethoven, boys, till there was you, she loves you, this boy, I want to hold your hand, money, that's what I want, twist and shout, and a reprise from From Me To You. 30 minutes of said show were broadcast by the BBC during a program called It's the Beatles, between 8.10 and 8.40 pm. Unfortunately for BBC and their audience, the scant rehearsal time, only about 20 minutes, technical difficulties, and most importantly the incessant screaming of the fans completely ruined the transmissions, causing some heated discussion in the executive board about the opportunity to air such material. You find the link to 9 minutes of the spectacle in the episode description. Also in the description there's a link to www.simonmas.com support, where you can find all the ways you can show me your support for keeping on creating podcast episodes and music-related content for you. Back on the 7th of December 1963, after the afternoon show, the Beatles proceeded recording a two-minute interview for BBC Radio, to be broadcast during a 90-minute special called Top Pops of 1963, aired between 6 and 7.30 pm on the 25th of December. After completing this final BBC-related job, the band rushed through a police-protected, closed Podsey Street, reaching the audience cinema for another night of their autumn tour. A business event happened on this date in 1964, with George Harrison renaming the shelf company he had brought in September see episode 254, into Harrisongs. In fact, George and Ringo were under contractual obligations with Northern Songs until March 1968, and so Harrison started to be active from that date onwards, creating a much bigger income for George for his songwriting efforts. In 1965, the Beatles performed two shows at the ABC Cinema in Manchester for their UK tour. 
On the 7th of December 1967, the Apple Boutique officially opened to the public at 94 Baker Street, London. The business, one of the many disasters bearing the Apple stamp, was actually the result of several changes of plans. Initially, it was supposed to be the first in a chain of quote-unquote normal shops, under the supervision of Clive Epstein, whose aim was to bring in some money and avoid taxes. The Beatles liked the idea of diversification, but wanted to open a shop selling stuff they were interested in. An initial idea was having a retailer that would sell all white things – clothes, china, whatever – which eventually morphed into having a kind of avant-garde fashion boutique stocked with clothes designed by the art collective The Fool. Let's close the episode with another concert and more TV. On the 7th of December 1969, John Lennon and Yoko Ono appeared on The Question Why, a BBC One religious series. The program, broadcast live from the Lime Grove Studios between 6.15 and 6.50 pm, featured a theological debate about evil. It was chaired by Malcolm Mudgeridge and featured another seven guests. Later in the evening, the Delaney and Bunny package tour, featuring George Harrison in the main act's band, reached its end with a performance at the Fairfield Hall in Croydon. The concert was recorded and released on the album Delaney and Bunny on tour with Eric Clapton. For contractual reasons, George was credited as Misterioso. If you're curious about how it all started, check episodes 335 and 336 of What A Fab Day. And if you're curious and want to get more details about the Beatles' history, you'd better tune in tomorrow for your daily dose. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.